Mz is supposed to x plus jy, so, so that the locus defined by the argument z plus 2 over z is equal to pi over 4 is a circle. Hence, determine its center and radius. So from the other diagram, we could relate the Cartesian form of a complex number to with the polar form, isn't it? Mode of Z, the modulus of Z is the Pythagoras theorem, isn't it? The modulus of Z was the Pythagoras theorem, which was giving us what? R squared is X squared plus Y squared. The modulus of Z was the Pythagoras theorem, which was given by R squared is equal to X squared plus Y square. So from here, you can get R, which is the modulus of Z, to be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Are you well? Then from the same concept in other diagram, we found the argument of Z, which was giving the direction. The argument of Z was the tan inverse of Y over X. Are you seeing that? The argument of Z the argument of Z was equal to tan inverse of Y over X. Now if you look at this question, you've been given the argument of Z plus 2 over Z to be pi over 4. Are we together? So you know that argument of Z is tan inverse of Y over X. Then you'll be told that argument of Z plus 2 over Z is pi over 4. Now here what you say, you let what is inside this bracket maybe to be Z1, isn't it? So you say, let Z1 to be equal to Z plus 2 over Z. So that will imply argument of Z plus 2 over Z will simply be argument of Z1 to be equal to pi over 4. Are we together? So if you let z plus 2 over z to be z1, then it means we now have argument of z1 to be pi over, to be equal to pi over 4, isn't it? Yes. So having learned that the argument of z1 is pi over 4, then you ask yourself by definition of argument, what is an argument? An argument is the tan inverse of y over x, isn't it? So it means argument of Z1 is going to be the tan inverse of Y1 over X1 if Z1 is X1 plus Y1J. Because we are going to take Z to be X plus YJ, meaning Z1 is X1 plus Y1J. Are we together? So this argument of Z1, which is the tan inverse, which is the tan inverse of y1 over x1 is what you've been told to be equal to pi over 4. So it means the tan inverse of y1 over x1 is equal to pi over 4. Because this tan inverse of y1 over x1 is the argument of z1. And that z1 is there, is the z plus 2 over z. Are we together? To go back so it means we need, if we remove this tan inverse, if tan inverse goes to the other side, it becomes tan, isn't it? Yes. So taking tan inverse to the other side, we remain with y1 over x1 to be tan pi over 4. Tan pi over 4 is what? It's 1. Pi over 4 is like 45 degrees, isn't it? Yes. So what is tan 45 degrees? C1. So it means if tan inverse of y1 over x1 is pi over 4, taking tan inverse of the side meaning y1 over x1 is tan pi over 4, it's 1. So it means y1 over x1 is equal to, is equal to 1. Are we together? So it means for us to solve this, all we need to find is y1 and, and x1, isn't it? That is all we need to to find. So for us to find that, we go back to what was our z? We said z1 it to be z plus 2 over over z. See there? Are we together? Yes. See that is what we let z1 to be. Yes. So can we now substitute the value of z? Because we were told to let z if z is x plus j y. So it means where there is z, you substitute with x plus j y. So it means z1 is equal to x plus j y then plus 2 over x plus j y. You substitute the value of z. So you now have z, z1. 
So we found Z1 is equals to X plus JY then plus 2 over X plus JY. Then you rearrange in complex number, real on their own and complex on their own, isn't it? So if you rearrange this, you will find Z1 is equal to X does not have a J, that is real, positive 2 does not have a J, that is real. So you place real numbers on their own. Are we together? Yes. Then plus J, Y, then it is over X plus J, Y. So for us to make Z1 in the form of X1 plus, plus J, Y1, then we have to rationalize. We have to multiply the numerator in the complex conjugate. That is when we will get rid of our complex number in the numerator, isn't it? Yes. Because we need to express Z1 to be X1 plus Y1, J, isn't it? So it means we multiply this with the complex conjugate. So we multiply the conjugate. You simply alter the sign of that term in the in the, in the denominator, the middle term, the middle, the, the, the middle sign, isn't it? So here we have x plus j y. So it means the conjugate will be x minus j y. You do the same in the numerator to balance the equation, isn't it? So in the denominator. Is going to be a difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares, when you square j, you change that sign to positive, isn't it? So here we now have, work out the numerator. x plus 2 multiplies all the terms to the other side. x plus 2 times x, you get x squared plus 2x, isn't it? Yes. x plus 2 times x, you get that. Then again, x plus 2 times negative jy. You have negative jy into x plus 2, so we will get with x plus 2 in this first bracket, isn't it? Yes. Then positive jy multiplies everything on the other side, isn't it? So plus jy times x, what do you get? Yes. Plus jy times x, you get positive j, jxy, if you arrange alphabetically, isn't it? Yes. Then plus jy times negative jy, that is negative j squared y squared. So j squared is negative one. negative 1. So negative into negative is positive. positive. So you remain with y plus y squared, isn't it? Then all of that in the numerator we have a difference of two squares. So we have x squared plus y squared because j squared is negative 1. So negative and negative will be positive, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. Because this side should be a difference of two squared. It should be x squared minus x minus minus jy squared. So j squared is negative 1, changing it to positive. Are we together? So you know that we have x squared plus y squared. So in the numerator, can you now put the real parts on their own and the imaginary part on their own, isn't it? So there we have the real part are the terms without j. So we have x squared plus 2x then plus y squared. Those terms does not have j, so those are real parts, isn't it? Then plus the parts with j, you can join the parts with j together. Are you seeing here? Yeah. So plus j, if you factorize j outside, what do you remain with here? Negative. So you get negative yx. Remember there's negative outside here. Negative yx minus 2y. Have you seen that? This is negative jy times x. Negative jy times x is negative jyx. So you remain with the negative yx inside you factorize out j. Yes. Then negative jy times 2, you get negative 2jy, isn't it? So if you factor us out j, you remain with the negative 2. Are we together? Yes. Negative 2y. And then the last one there, there we have plus xy. You factor us out j. So you can see negative jx, negative yx, which is the same as negative xy, goes with the positive xy, cancels out, isn't it? Yes. Are we together? Yes. So what do you remain with there? Negative 2yj. Is that okay? So here you remain with the negative 2y, then j outside. Then everything is over x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared is a common denominator, meaning this is over x squared plus y squared, this is over x squared plus y squared. So can you see, you now found z1. What are you already sleeping? <laughs>
So that one we have x squared plus 2x plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Then plus j into negative 2 y over x squared plus y squared. Now from here, this is z1. And remember, z1 is the same as x1 plus jy1. Are you see that? To go over there. Can you now compare the coefficient? Because z1 is supposed to be x1 plus jy1. So it means what is x1? x1 is the first expression here, isn't it? Are you seeing x1? So x1 is what? x1 is x squared plus 2x plus plus y squared over over x squared plus y squared. Then you move, what is y1? Because it is supposed to be jy1, meaning the whole of this term is y1. See yeah. So y1 is negative, negative 2y over x squared plus y squared, isn't it? Are we together? Yeah. Now from there, we now go back to that our equation. What did we find? We found out that y1 over x1 is what? Is equal to 1, isn't it? y1 over x1 is equal to? One. So what is y1 over x1? y1 over x1 is the same as y, y1 times 1 over x1, which is equal to 1, isn't it? Meaning it is y1 times the reciprocal of x1. See there? Can you substitute, put where y1 is? Negative 2y over x squared plus y squared, then times the reciprocal of x1, meaning you turn x1 outside there, isn't it? So that one is times x squared plus y squared over over x squared plus 2x plus y squared is equal to? So it means x squared plus y squared cancels out. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Yes. So here we remain with negative 2y over x squared plus 2x plus y squared to be equivalent to 1. Then you get rid of that denominator, isn't it? Meaning you multiply both sides of the equation by what is in the denominator. Are we together? So you multiply both sides of the equation by x squared plus 2x plus y squared. You multiply both sides by x squared plus 2x plus y squared. So that cancels out. What do you remain with? Negative 2y. You remain with the negative 2y to be equal to x squared plus 2x plus y squared. So you can put everything on one side of the equation, isn't it? So if we start with x squared plus 2x plus y squared to be equivalent negative 2y, negative 2y coming this side becomes positive 2y. So we'll have x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus 2y is equals to 0. Now there you now use the method of the computing square in quadratic equations, isn't it? So in the method of completing square meaning, we let it a complete square, isn't it? We complete the square for x, we complete the square for y. Are we together? You see, for a case, when you have a unit circle center 0, 0, if you have a circle center 0, 0 like this, if you have a point on the, along the circumference of the circle point x, y, then let us say this center maybe, instead of 0, 0, let us say the center is a, b. Are we together? So if you drop here, it means this length will be, here will be y, here will be x. So y minus, my, what is the length of, 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 of this opposite side here? See this y minus b. Are you seeing that? So that length is y minus b. And this length down here is x minus a, isn't it? Are we together? To go more. Then the radius of this circle is r. Are you seeing that? The radius of that circle is? is r. So what do you see here? You can now see Pythagoras theorem, the important new square, which is r squared is equal to x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. So that is the standard equation of a circle, meaning any circle center a, b is having an equation x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. That is the standard equation of a circle. So it means we need to complete the square of this equation to form the standard equation of a circle, isn't it? Have you seen that? So for us to complete the square, meaning we complete the square for x and we complete the square for y by adding the constant term, isn't it? 
So we have x squared plus 2x. The constant term you had a half of the coefficient of the middle term. So the coefficient of the middle term of x is positive 2, isn't it? So a half of positive 2 is positive 1. So what you do on this side of the equation, you must do on the other side of the equation to balance the equation. I've added positive 1 squared on this side, I have to do on the same, on the other side of the equation to balance the equation. Are you seeing that? Do the same for y. Complete the square of y. We have y squared plus 2y. Then the constant term, what do you add? I have the coefficient of the middle term squared, isn't it? So this middle term is positive 2. I have for positive 2 is positive 1. So you add positive 1 squared. If you add that one there, you do the same on the other side of the equation to balance the equation, isn't it? Are we together? So you can now see this is now a complete square of x. So a complete square of x, you collect the square term of x. We have x and positive 1, then squared. So you can see the reason why this sign is important. Meaning if here in the middle term of x was negative 2, you are going to have inside this bracket negative 1. So that you end up with x minus 1. Have you seen that? Are we together? So in our case here, the middle term was positive 2, a half of positive 2 is positive 1. So positive 1 squared, so we have positive 1. To go for Then we have plus. If you complete this is now a perfect square, you have y and positive 1, isn't it? So it is y plus 1 squared. It's equal to what? 1 squared is 1 plus 1 squared is 1. So you get 2. Are we together? Then what have we found to be the standard equation of a circle? The standard equation of a circle, so from here, we've already proved the first part of the equation. We were told if z is x plus jy, so that the locus defined by this argument, z plus 2 over z, is equal to pi over is a circle. So have you seen we prove that this locus is a circle? Because this is an equation of a circle. This implies that a circle. Because this is a circle. Have you seen that? So we will define the locus defined by this argument is a circle. So having, having defined the locus defined by this argument to be a circle, then we look for the radius and the center in still part 2. So the standard equation of a circle is that x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is the same as r squared. Have you seen that when I was sleeping? <laughs> so you have so you can now start comparing the, 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 the coefficient in the same terms, isn't it? R squared here is the same as 2, isn't it? So we have R squared is 2. So what is the radius of the circle? Square root of, you found the radius. Then what is the center of the circle? You start comparing. Negative a, you can see that negative a is the same as positive 1. The position where negative a is occupying is the position positive 1 is occupying next plus 1, isn't it? So it means negative a is equal to positive 1. So that will imply a is negative 1. Are you seeing the way I'm extracting there? Yeah? So that you don't come here and say that a is 1. You have to be very observative, isn't it? Then in the next case, negative b, you can see there negative b is the same as positive 1. So if you divide both sides by negative 1, you get b is negative 1. And the center of the circle is a, b, meaning the center of this circle is negative 1, negative 1. So you define the locus to be a circle and you determine its center and radius. So that is how to determine this locus of an argument of a complex number. Then we will define that locus to be a circle and we will determine its center and 